kick this off today by talking a little bit about the importance of the theme to this conference. Sports was, sport was once Australia's most egalitarian pursuit. Not so anymore. Community sport is the very fabric that has held this country together and the glue that binds us all. The glue and fabric are just holding together. In too many settings and too many places these days, sport has become the realm of the middle classes. In theory, it's open to anyone, but in practice, it's available and welcoming only to those people who look like us, who think like us, and who act like us. To Senator Lundy, may I say that the former Rudd government and now Gillard government are to be applauding, applauded for recognising the crisis that community sports is in, and particularly for many disadvantaged groups who are less likely to participate in sport. This group constitutes a large and growing minority of participants and potential, potential participants who, for many reasons that we hope to shed more light on today, are not able to participate in sport and hence are socially excluded to the detriment and, but also to the long-term detriment of Australian society. The Crawford Report and subsequent actions and grants instituted by the Government and the Australian Sports Commission have been welcomed, but they have merely resuscitated the community sports patient. It is now an intensive care unit awaiting a further recovery program. There's much more to be done. The community sports patient needs leadership, funds and programs that will first put it on the track to good health but also sustain it in the long term. Your continuous support, championing, in compassion and progress is so desperately needed. While I have your attention, I'd like to take some to offer the three solutions that I have for Senator Lundy and Judy Flanagan. The first is to offer through settling some small monetary coupons for each member of disadvantaged families or individuals to enable their children and themselves to pay for local sporting joining fees or buy sports equipment. The second is to introduce into disadvantaged communities some sports microbanks just as we did in the southwest of Victoria to assist new, local newly arrived communities. That local sports assembly in southwest West Victoria in Warrnambool now has its families repaying the cost of their children's yearly fees via their settling payments. And the third idea I'd like to proffer to try and coax this poor patient back to good health is that the government should extend its successful Australian Sports Commission active after school program to early secondary school level, years seven and eight, both for metro, rural and regional schools. Our studies and many others show that young people are between the ages of 12 to 15 are vulnerable to social exclusion and initiatives like the Australian Sports Commission Active After Schools Program, could it be a lunchtime schools program, plus local government sports, sporting club support give these young people home and a chance of inclusion. We are starting such a program with the Australian Sports Commission in the city of Monash and it would be great if the idea could spread further afield. A former Prime Minister once said that the laptop was the key tool of the 21st century. But from our perspective, we'd like to see young people and adults get away from their laptops from time to time and out of the house and physically participating in some sports-related activity. This is the real tool for Australia's physical and mental well-being. These are just three ideas that the people who have come along today are those who have pondered these questions long and hard, those who are the front lines of sports inclusion. I'm sure you will have all your ideas for your solutions and I look forward to hearing from them. This is just the start of what I hope will be a long and fruitful partnership between us all. It's the start of a healthy dialogue. This conference seeks to commence and define a narrative for the recovery of community sports patient and to give voice to our community sports sector which needs immediate impact. We have assembled some outstanding speakers here today and we look forward to hearing their positive solutions to the community sports crisis for this country's less fortunate people. We have with us today experts in the area of sports inclusion, people who are up to it theory and practice and I'm sure we'll be all looking forward to hearing from them. I'm also very excited about the prospect of hearing from the speakers in the audience on the challenges that we all face as a result of growth, as well as the use and impacts of social media, volunteering, as they relate to social inclusion. And keep the questions coming. This is one of your very few opportunities to ask some seriously hard questions today, folks. I hope you will all stick around until the end, because last thing today, we're going to hear, be hearing from Martin Flanagan, a world-class community sports commentator and writer at the Melbourne Age, who will inspire us by telling the story of one Indigenous young man's rise from obscurity in the Northern Territory to the MCG and beyond. This conference is a little like an old town hall meeting with short speeches followed by Q&A sessions, which we trust will give you a genuine opportunity to ask questions from the floor. From the floor. This is about community and sharing ideas. It's not about being lectured to by big sporting bodies, their sponsors or corporates or elite sports bodies and proponents. We are here today to find a path towards genuine participation of ordinary people in sports. And we want to take that inclusion ethos right through to the conference as well. 
I welcome you all here today and trust that many of you will take some ideas as well as offering some of your own. My homework for you as we go away this afternoon is to continue to pressure local, state and federal government and your national and state sporting organisations to ensure a fair go for your sport and for your wider community. And finally, a special and personal note, a thank you to Harold Wake who gave my family the first Sharon uh, to replace the paper football that we used to have. Jack Ware and the Pascavale, the headmaster of my old primary school and Pascavale Cricket and Football Club, for welcoming us and encouraging four migrant boys and giving us an opportunity. And to the great community club, the Essendon Football Club, for the opportunity to play senior football in the 70s when there weren't many of us around, and a directorship. And of course, finally to my parents, for their strong family, education, sport, community and social justice values. Thank you, and God bless and have a great day. Thank you.